Hey everyone, Three box step thing here. So it's under here, along with your volume and some other buttons and stuff, which you can easily read about in the manual that, uh, that it's being given. So I've got multifunction control manual, I've got the manual for the radio, manual for the truck itself, manual for the smoke generator too, so. Okay, so the main switch to turn it on is down here and you can turn it upside down, take a peek, and I'll take some pictures of it upside down too, so. That turns it on. Oh, sorry. First, turn your radio on. There you go. So now she's on. All right. Put this all the way up here, up there. You got hazards. Bring this all the way down. Bring it down, you got lights. So first tops, then those. Those are some fog lights, but I turned them into reds. Pretty cool. Turn the uh, this back to center and go down. You got your short horn, long horn. I don't have the smoke plugged in the second, but I will plug it in and show you how that works as well. This is a little different as far as how to attach and detach the fifth wheel. Actually, actually what I do want to do, I actually want to show you guys the, uh, this custom bit. So there's a lot of custom stuff on here and I'll go over that in a second. One of them is the rear bumper. It came well, it was supposed to be polished, and aluminum wasn't polished, so I painted it. And it actually looks really cool, especially in person. So if you say you throttle up, and then brakes are bright, and then that's your reverse. Uh, turn signals. Pretty cool, huh? Alright. Fifth wheel plate. Well, the fifth wheel plate is aluminum. The plate that sits on top of it is aluminum because these originally broke. So for, it must have been a bad casting from the original plastics. Normally they're tougher, but they crack, so that got replaced. This is something the custom I built to lock and unlock the kingpin. So what you're going to do on the radio to operate this is you're going to take this all the way over here. You can hear a click, and then this now operates. See. Basically down is all you need to do. You don't need to go forward on that. Pretty cool. And then turn it back off. You just hit that click, center it, and this is back to just being a horn. All right, some other stuff that's been upgraded, obviously. Uh, the wheels are CNC aluminum wheels. The beefier tires, all upgrades. The front's got super wide, wide tires on them. I actually, um, Strength and suspension, so it's a tiny bit lifted, so it's a bit more of a travel. Works better. The lights up on top are custom. The front. Sorry about that. Okay, so the front bumper is polished aluminum. The grill is brushed aluminum. Stainless steel sun visor and stainless steel two horns. Of course, we have a custom smoke generator in there and a bunch of other stuff, which I'm going to show you in a second. So the smoke generator runs off its own separate battery. I just did it that way because that way it gets a longer running time for the generator and the truck. So the truck has its own battery, which is this one down here. It's kind of prominent, but it's easy to charge. And then the generator's got a battery that sits on top, which is the same type of battery, just pull it out. So to turn the smoke generator on, there's two knobs. Let me show it here. One turns the heater on, and you don't want to go about six volts. A little light comes on. Make sure that sucker does not go above six volts or you're gonna have a problem. It will burn up. Right, two, 3.8. Let's leave it at 5.11. And then that's the heater. And then this one that comes on is the actual fan. Again, nothing above six volts, which is why I have it set up that way. 4.6, And. Voila, we got smoke out of the stacks. It will get the more it warms up. So give it like 30 seconds. When it gets really warmed up, it gets really thick. And if you over see the nothing's supposed to go above six volts, and if you turn the fan on too high, say right at six volts, 
it creates a lot of back pressure and ends up blowing off into the cab. So this is anything below six volts, you know, for the heater and the fan. Pretty cool, huh? Nice and realistic, plenty of smoke. I turn it off, I just go with the heater one first, which is the left side. Let the fan move for a second to move all that smoke out of there. And then the fan gets turned off as well. Pretty simple. Okay, let's get inside. All right, so to take the cab off, there are eight little screws. All right. There's one under here, one there is visible, these two. Both sides, so it's four on each side, eight screws. You want to make sure they go in loosely at first, then tighten them up once everything's in. And the same way, that's just how you put the, take the body, that's how you tighten the body, and then the body comes off. So there are tubes that go into these stacks, obviously. You want to make sure they, when you realize you're lifting, you kind of push them out. Because if you don't, it doesn't want to come out. They're not glued in or anything, they're just simply pushed in. That works just great. I've been doing it for a while. I've been using it like this for a bit, and no problem. So then you want to spread the stack the bottoms just a little bit, lift it, and voila, the cap comes off. And yes, there's wires attached to the cap, so you can't just pull it all the way out. You can't just rip it, but... And this is the battery that I use for the smoke generator. It just sits on top. You can just simply pull it out of the way. And then you got your motor function control system, 01. You got all your lights, sound functions, and then the smoke generator operates by itself with that box. And then the smoke generator itself, Da, 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 da. It's this little guy down there with a the fan on top. And got the hoses and stuff. It's plumbed all the way to the bottom. You can kind of see the hose down there. It's on both sides. Splits them down there. So then, basically when you're filling this, it, it holds about an ounce of fluid. And it will last a couple hours if you're running it on non-stop. It lasts a long time. Basically, this little guy, see the little black? You don't want to fill it above. They want to make sure it's a little bit below that part or it will not work. It'll just barely function. It's very sensitive that way. You want to make sure this fluid is a little bit below that. And to do that, uh, this little part here, you just take it up. I'll show you. Pretty zoom boo. The wires are kind of everywhere, but come on, baby. Come on. Ugh. It's funny, it's like the longer it sits, the less likely it wants to come up. Here, I got it. You get a little screwdriver. Help her along here. It's not a big deal. Once you broke, kind of break the seal, it comes right off. But there we go. Simple as that. See a little copper fitting. Basically, you stick that tube in there. Make sure the fluid is not above that black line. Make sure it's below the black line. And then when you fill it, it's got to be all, just make sure it's below that black line. Otherwise, you have to use a little something to pull some fluid out, otherwise it won't work right. But then once it's below that, it'll last quite a long time. And then, you know, if you're running it nonstop, you'll know when it's running low, the smoke will start depleting. It'll get less and less, and you shut the thing off for a while, you'll burn it up. The instruction manual for that is right here. All the instructions for this is included. But, you know, I do that. So, you know, it's not like you get to open this thing up every time you run it, unless you're running it for hours on end, which I doubt. Most people don't do that. But every so often you want to open it up, check to make sure that's you know filled to where it needs to be. Everything looks fine. The wires, nothing's kinked. And there you go. That's right. Fifty-five turn competition motor is also one of them. Good sticker. So you know I got nice servos in it. It's got you know the competition grade motor. Basically, it means it's got really high end brushes and it uses gold plating connections and everything. So it'll last and last and it works. It's beautiful. It's very quiet. I mean, on a different kind of uh, ESC where you can program like different things on it, it makes it super quiet. You don't even hear the little the little butt, the little whining sound at all. Well, this it's already preset. You can't. There's only some things you can change. Motor settings are not one, but it works great. It, this sucker does your sound, your motor, your lights. Very very nice. Controls everything. Controls this. Through, controls that too. Very functional. You know, servos, all that jazz. And then, of course, like I said, separate battery for your smoke unit. It is figured it was better that way.